Uh, this is Suzarka from Magpie Gemstones, and quite often I get into discussions with people on how to crimp, and I try to explain in words, and I'm never very successful. So here is my explanation with video. Hopefully, you'll be able to see what we're doing. Um, crimp beads come in different shapes. There's tubes, there's knurled leads, there's round ones, there's all kinds of um, crimp beads, and they all come in different sizes as well. There's two millimeters long, two millimeters wide, and then there's different sizes for different sizes of wire. I personally don't like to get that technical. I want one, and I want it to work on everything I do. So I've come up with a way to make them work for me, no matter what size wire I'm using um, and what I'm doing. So I usually use the two millimeter long, two millimeter wide crimp tubes. I like the sterling ones and the copper ones that I carry. Um, now before I always use two crimp beads because my jewelry is usually so heavy and if one gives then you have a backup of the other one. Now you flip it over and you work the end back through but before you do that if you want to attach a chain or a link um, now's the time to do that. I prefer to use a jump ring to attach these later so that you have a weak spot in the necklace that can give in case you know you get hung up on a car or something. Um, but let's say you want this end to be sec more secure. So I put this straight through the chain, I take my pliers, I bend the end over, and then I work the end into the crimps so that they've gone through the crimps twice. Well, maybe that's going to be easier said than done. There we go. And one of the places where your wire can get weak is up in this area where you've made the loop. Don't make your loop so tight that there isn't movement. If you pull it tight, they'll be rubbing and that spot will give um, sooner. So when the wire, um, the beading wire, um, this is size 0 0.24, 49 strand. I don't know if it's beadalon or flex. I, I have no idea. I don't recall which one it is. Um, but make sure it's going through parallel. It hasn't crossed over inside the um, crimp beads because then it'll create a weak point where um, the necklace could break. So I'm going to leave about that much room because that looks like a good amount of play. And I am going to take my crimping pliers. Now at this point one of the things you could do is you could just flat crimp. A lot of people do that. They just take a pair of pliers and they s flatten this crimp out. Um, some people don't even cover it up. I, I will sometimes flat crimp if something if I have a really really heavy necklace and then I will cover that up with jump rings or a large hole bead so that you don't see it. Um, but usually I prefer to do my my crimp beads the technical technically appropriate way. I don't know if it's right or wrong or what, but I like to use the crimp bead maker crimp bead pliers. Now the pliers have two spots. They have a rounded one side is half rounded with a notch in it and the other hole is around. You use the one with a notch first and you want to create I like putting the, the notched piece on top. You want to create a notch right between those two wires in the front of that crimp bead by pressing it like that. And there should be two, t two tunnels now where each one of the wires is going through that bead. Now I'm going to do the second crimp bead and I want to leave some room because I want to put on um, crimp bead covers after I'm all done to clean this look up. So I'm going to leave a little tiny bit of room and I'm going to separate my wires and make sure that they've, they're pulled apart a little bit. And I've made my dent on the front of the crimp tube. The back is straight um, because this part of the tool was only dented on one side. So sometimes now when you go to the back and you try to fold this over with the rounded part, it won't fold because the dent wasn't deep enough. Um, and that happens especially if you're using too small a wire for too big of a crimp bead. So what I do is I take the tip of this of the pliers, I put it in the dent, and I just give a little tiny press. You never want to squeeze too hard because you don't want to create a really tight spot or mush your wire because um, then you're going to have a place that will break. Now if it still doesn't look like it's enough of a dent where when I fold it, it'll fold over instead of just opening up again. I'll take two pairs of flat nose pliers, grab one on each side of the dent. Ah, I can't grab it with these pliers. Anyway, you get the idea. Put it there, and then I bend it um, so that it's 
more of an angle so that when I take the crimps and I fold it, it does so with ease and it doesn't open up that jump ring or the crimp bead. So let's see if these will fold over. That one folded over beautifully. And that one folded over perfect. Okay, so then I take my the tips of these crimp pliers and I kind of squeeze that fold just a touch to give it a little bit more um, security. So now this is this crimp bead down here is kind of opening up on me. But that's okay because it's going to have some hold and you have a backup of the next crimp. That's the other reason to do two crimps in case one gives. You've got the other one as insurance. So then I take my um, cutters that are not my ones for sterling wire or gold wire. They're not flush cutters. They're cutters that I only use on beading wire because beading wire will chew up your flush cutters for your sterling wire and leave gouges in here and they won't be flush cutting anymore. And there it's crimped, really, really tough. It's strong. Um, I'll take my crimp covers, which are um, for two millimeter crimps. You can buy them in different sizes. And they have an opening, once I get them in, in these pliers, they have an opening in the front. And I stick them in the round part of my crimping pliers. And I swing that bead in over top of the crimp and I give it a little squeeze and I turn my pliers a little bit and squeeze from a number of different angles until that bead looks flush closed and like a perfect bead and that way you can't see the crimp and I'll do it with another to cover the second crimp and then you'll see why I left a space between the two because these will take up room on each edges, edges of the crimp bead and they'll press up against one another and look as if they were strung straight on to the jewelry wire. And that is how I personally crimp my necklaces shut. Thanks for watching and come visit Magpie Gemstones to get some awesome beads. Thanks. Bye.